Hello and welcome back to the Analyst Desk. It's time for a brand new game. And joining me this time, we do have Walshy, who had uh, more than a little of an adventure getting here. And answer, how are you both? Doing Dave, well? you go first, man. I mean, uh, yeah, I how are well. you? How it's, are you? It's been a long day. Where have you been? Long day. I was supposed to be here uh, about like 28 hours ago, something along those lines. And so you could say you were late. I yes, mean, that, you'd probably fall into that bracket. It's a really late. poor attempt at traveling. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was bad. I, I fly out of a pretty small airport. Um, basically, I got delayed a little bit and missed my whole flight to London. So they booked me for the following day. And then I got to miss like some of the boring meetings and stuff on Thursday. So it worked out well. So but Crucial meetings is the word we use. <laughs> crucial <laughs> meetings. Uh, but we're glad you're here now. We're glad you can kind of join us on the desk and for the rest of the weekend. Uh, speaking of the rest of the weekend, let's take a little look at the fixtures that we've had so far and the ones that are actually going to be up and coming. The game we just had was obviously Team Infuse versus Hyped. Uh, and we should be able to bring up these fixtures for the rest of the day now and kind of see how it all goes down. Obviously, the game we're going to be looking at next, Excel versus Reformed. And then I and I versus Riot. That's probably been tipped as one of the games to watch today. A lot of people are very excited to see that one. Should be close. Uh, Rift Gaming versus One Gaming Esports. And then the rest of the schedule. We are now steadily getting through it. It has a lot of games on today, 10 games in total, but it's going fairly swiftly. Um, and then after that, we are going to take a look at now Group D, the bracket for Group D and how Group D actually works out entirely. Uh, and maybe what our analysts kind of think of it on just first look. First look, I mean, you already said the first match we got coming up here with Excel versus Reformed. Um, I am not as familiar with the squad Reformed, so this is going to be my first uh, check of seeing how they're doing and seeing how they play, but anything can happen. I mean, these are top 16 teams out here in the uh, UK area, so I can't wait to see what kind of talent we got out here. Okay. Well, I, I think uh, this game probably will be fairly one-sided. I think the, the way it's gone so far is, is has been fairly one-sided itself. But let's actually just jump straight into this game then and, and see if you guys agree with my you know, amateur kind of analysis there. Excel, are they going to be another stomping team? Uh, for me, Excel, they've got to come out and sort of perform the same way that the uh, the top three teams have so far. Um, they've been the kind of um, the fourth place sort of consistent team. They haven't really challenged the top three. Um, but if they come out strong here, then it's a bit of a statement for them. So if they come out, there's some good players on the squad they're playing against. It's not quite as a, a sort of a one-sided affair as we might have had in the first couple of games. But if Excel can sort of bring those results out, those one-sided results, I think yeah, the top three would be a little bit worried about that. So it'll be definitely a more exciting series to watch. Well, pretty much everyone here is, is I'm not going written XL off, but they've put them a very solid fourth. <laughs> a consistent <laughs> fourth. <laughs> a consistent, fourth. consistent fourth. Now, yeah. if you're XL, that's not going to be good enough for you, especially since the top three from here qualify for the EMEA qualifiers. Um, if you're XL, you've got to be sitting there right now thinking, how do we get over this reputation we've got? Is, is it fair on them? I mean, you can't say it's not fair on them. I mean, <laughs> if, you can, if you place fourth in every single event and every time you play the top three, you get 3 0 would I mean, I, I don't know if that's just me, but that's fair. <laughs> I mean, that's as fair as you can get. So uh, they've got to step it up this this tournament. I mean, it's their chance to show that they, they can move into that tier one of teams, into that top three. And if they can do that, then more power to them. And uh, it will be good for them going into the sort of the later brackets in the tournament. All right, I kind of want to jump on something we haven't really covered that much next week. The, the map, the first map we're going to see, Stronghold on the Rig. How, how would you like to see the teams approach this one? Stronghold on the Rig, uh, without a question, you want to be holding outside. You want to get Nest and Basement. It just forces the opposing team to continually spawn on the inside corner. And even though they get BR base, it's not enough. It's so hard to coordinate a push out to either nest or towards basement where you have all four members of the opposing team. If, they just, if they're set in the right positions, they just have to do such a perfect push in order to break that setup. Okay, that's fair enough. But do you think, I mean, we've been talking a little bit again, and, and don't get me wrong, the first four matches of today, everyone's expected to be very one-sided. Anyway, the underdogs can score a little bit of a victory here. Well, as I said, the, the, the team they're playing, they're not the worst players in the world. They're, you know, there's some good players on this squad, and I think the games will definitely have the potential to be a lot closer. They can win a lot more individual fights than maybe we've seen previously. So if they can get out to a, a hot start, get a couple dead, and get off to a good start, maybe get early control, then you never know. If you can get early control, you can, you can really upset a team. Uh, yeah, and especially on rig, strongholds is one of those game types where when you do get that full setup, it is so powerful. So if, you know, if Reform comes out, Guns blazing, gets those first few kills, gets that first initial setup. We'll just have to see what uh, Excel does to break it. But the same point is they can get some points on the board. It's not going to be, uh, it has the potential not to be that 100-0 devastating victory. 
Very, very much about the break then is what I've kind of taken away from both of you there. Yes, Basically, absolutely if, they, the start. if they don't come out swinging, we're expecting an, uh, another absolute stomping. Um, all right, map number two then. Uh, how do you think the, the teams should kind of go into this? It's going to be Coliseum Slayer. Well, for me, you've got to stop Snakey. I mean, uh, in the qualifier so far, every time that guy's touched the snipe, it's it's just it's game over. I mean, we see, we saw him almost get a perfection in one game, in one of the qualifiers. He was just no scoping people, just locking spawns down. So you've got to, we've gone through it about a thousand times, but it's power <laughs> weapon control on Coliseum. You have to get the rockets, you have to get the sniper, and you need to use them when you get them. So uh, if you see the sniper or the rockets in the hands of Snakey, then uh, you've got to be a little bit worried, to be honest. So... For you, Snakey's the key player on that map. Yeah, he's 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 going to be the player who's picking up the most kills for that squad. Um, and he's definitely a player to watch. He's one of those players who could, if he plays well this event, then he could be the sort of the catalyst to get them into that sort of top three. Is it is it just this map or is it the entire weekend he needs to really go off? I, I think they all need to go off this entire <laughs> weekend. But uh, I think a lot of the weight, as far as the slaying is concerned, has got to be on Snakey's shoulders. But uh, his teammates, they can't just rely on him. They've got to step up their game as well. And they've got to support him everywhere they can. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for that. Let's get a quick scoreline prediction from both of you. Let's start with you. I'm going to go 2-0. Okay, Walshy. 2-0. 2-0. I think Excel. it's, it's kind yep. of a similar story. All right. Well, let's see how Excel can take this and whether or not the analysts will be right again here. But over to our wonderful casters, it's Tun and Wonderboy. Thank you very much once again, Brycey. I'm here with Wonderboy. As said, my name is Tun. We've got a good game coming up here. We've got Excel coming out the back here. And they're going to look to be the strongest team in this matchup. Yeah, I think we all predicted XL kind of the fourth place team here. So we're looking for them really to uh, put on a show here. You know, we, we want them to push on from that fourth place. We've all yeah. predicted them as fourth. We, we pretty much got them down as a lock for fourth place. We kind of want them to really put on a show here and improve on, on their placing. Yeah, so I mean, we, we talked about the, the teams who are in the top four seeds, like having sort of no pressure in these first yeah. games. But do you think there's going to be a pressure from Excel to perform as well as the previous three teams have? Because yeah. I mean, they really came out there and sort of stamped it down saying, we are here to do business this yeah, weekend. Yeah, I certainly think so, especially as, as most of the analysts have pointed out, you know, yeah. maybe Excel on the outside looking in at that top three. So I think yeah. certainly after being being the last of the, the big four, as it were, to play, they certainly okay. have a lot of pressures, uh, pressure on their shoulders to, to perform here, I think. Uh, and how do you see it going? I mean, you see it going the same sort of direction as what the analysts think. I was going to go with 2-0 as well. And yeah. I'm not just saying that because the guys are not tested. But I mean, well, obviously, you're looking at the seed, comparing the two teams together. Yeah. Going off that alone, you've got to say, like, the disparity is big. Not as big as some of the games we've seen previously. But, yeah. I mean, it's still quite a large sort of gap between the two teams. Yeah, I'd say so. I mean, XL, obviously, a, a much well-rounded team. Uh, certainly, I think this reform team is is uh, a bit of a makeshift, if you will. Yeah. Uh, but there are some strong sl strong players on this team. Of course, you've got Godley, Crispy Beck, Lindez, and Colossal. They're all, they're all tournament-ready uh, players, so uh, they should put up a fight. This is definitely the, the toughest match okay. of the big four. So but we're going to see the maps that they're going to try and put up a fight on, and it is going to be the same three that we have seen previously in the last few games. It's going to be Strongholds on the rig, Team Slayer on Coliseum. Will we get to see Capture of Lag on Truth? One I, day. One day, I One hope. day, maybe. But I don't think that day is going to be today. Because well, I think so, it, certainly not if the analysts are right. I mean, you know, I we, we've I mean, all got this as a 2 -0. Yeah, I, I mean, everyone sort of has this down as XL really trying to prove how good they are compared to the other three teams. And yeah. trying, it's just see who can be too hard. <laughs> Essentially yeah, today, that is, so. that is what it is. I mean, as obviously as the games go on through the day, the games are going to get a lot closer. I mean, looking, it's going to go down obviously to that seventh, eighth game. I think it's Rift against Ironhide. I think those two yeah. do play each other. I'm not going to land myself in hot water. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, those two playing each other. It's obviously going to be a very close game. But these teams, XL, definitely the stronger. Let's see what they can do. We are going to go on the first map. It is going to be the rig playing Stronghold. I love this game time. Uh, it's something completely new. It's sort of an ad adaptation on King of the Hill, if you like. But yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't know what your thoughts are on it as uh, somebody who's played Halo. Yes. Yeah, I think it, 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 I think Strong Side said it's probably one of the most well-rounded game types that we have in, in the circuit at the moment. I mean, there seems to be a, certainly a, a, an established meta game of taking uh, the basement and the net and the nest stronghold. So those are certainly the two that you want to keep and, and try and avoid taking this BR base as Godshot is at the moment. Okay, well, XL getting this uh, the supposed weaker spawn, and they haven't necessarily pushed Nest as hard. They have lost that and basement, so they are currently a score point on the board, and Reform have done better than the previous game yeah. game had went for the opposition team and going up against Infuse, but XL trying to get themselves in this one. A couple of kills going to go on the board, but the, all the points are going to go down to Reform at the start here. Big Shot's going to come in there from Godshot, not quite landing on them all there. He is going to try and get over there to Nest, which is the essential point you want to control. Yeah, exactly. You want to control the basement and the Nest, and that's exactly what Reform are doing at the moment. Godshot here is trying to make something happen for his team. 
But uh, they're currently 9-0 down. A couple of kills go on the board there, though, for XL. And now exactly what Godshot is going to do is he's going to try and push that basement area because that's exactly what they want. He takes down Godly there with the SMG again. Another kill on the board there for XL. And that's going to give them a prime position here to take the basement. And that's exactly yeah. what they're going to do. That was really, really well played. I mean, we've seen them sort of... They took their time, they made up their positions, and then it was like a snap, like just a flick of a switch. Yep. Every, every single player moves in, makes the kills they need to, they get control of the basement and the nest, and they are in control of this game. Albeit they are a few points behind, that will be racked up very, very quickly. Can this kill come in there from Godshot? It's important, he does need some help from his team. It's a couple of guys coming over there from Reform, trying to get a hold of the basement. He's held this down fantastically well. Hasn't managed to die yet, and it's gonna happen soon. I think he does have the SMG, but a lot of pressure being applied to him. Can he manage the whole basement down? A couple of shots, gonna go in there, and a really good shot on the Crispy Beck there. And the rest of his team are here to help. Lendez is gonna pick up the kill, but can Godshot clean things up? Not quite gonna happen for him, as that's big kills coming out of Reform. They're getting some control around basement. Can they move that to Nest? Yeah, I am seeing Lunny, though, here, picking up the scatter shot just as XL take the lead. But the Nest is actually being taken there from Reform, so they will be the team that is currently scoring. They do have that BR base, though, and, and as long as they have that, they will be susceptible to uh, to spawning over to that side of the map. Godshot out. here is going to try and take... Uh, excuse me, Lunny here is going to try and take out a few of the Reform players. He'll take down Lindez, and now he has another player to find over there by the Nest. But Godshot cleans up Colossal, and it should be XL here, retaking the Nest and regaining scoring. Yeah, slight comeback from Reform there, trying to get some points on the board. They did manage to do so, and they have got a small lead, so maybe we're not going to have as much of a, a one-sided game and there's players changing their sentence in the middle of the game. If you listen to Golden Boy, you wouldn't be doing that. But yeah, XL currently, uh, it's a very close game. You know, it's not what we necessarily expected. Both these teams tossing and turning between who has that control. Colossal's going to pick up a double kill there for Reformed. Are they going to be able to get a control of basement? Currently, they only have BR base, but if they can get control of this, they can maybe try and move over to Nest, get that basement Nest control that we talked about. They do get a hold of basement as well, so maybe some points on the board here. They do have the control. Yeah, they certainly do, and they are currently only a point behind, so as long as they can maintain this scoring advantage, they wow. will regain the lead. But two kills on the board there from XL will make it certainly difficult for them. They do take the lead. That is Reform now in the lead. But as you see on your screen, Snakey here from XL is going to try and retake that basement with the help of his teammate, and that's exactly what they do. And he's going to take down Crispy Beck, I do believe. No, Crispy Beck is still alive, but Lunny will finish him off. Just it, like that, XL back on the board. It just seems as if XL seem to turn up the heat when they need to. It, it, it seems as in, in between, maybe their movement and teamwork isn't necessarily as good as what we've seen. I mean, everyone's talking about that top three and it'd be hard to break. Maybe yep. we're seeing that's maybe why XL aren't as convincing as the others, but when it needs to happen for them against Reform, they are making it happen. And that is the AR kill going to come in there for Snakey Havoc, picking up a kill there at Junction. Let's see what Snakey can do from here. There's a lot of pressure being put on Biabis. Yeah, most certainly. I'm surprised there's actually this much pressure being put on these spawners here from XL. They, uh, it's kind of not really the base that you want to push the BR base. You kind of just want to trap them in there. No. Snake here is going to be flanked, and Crispy Bake will finish off the job. Let's swap over to him. But like we said, you don't really want to be pushing that BR base too aggressively because you just kind of want to trap the other team in there because it's the, the least favorable spawn. Got that new lock and loaded skin on his pistol oh, there. Uh, it's, it's fantastic. Nice and loud. That's what we like. But on board with him now. What can he do with this railgun? Now he's not going to pick up the kill there. It's going to be Lindez, but shots did go in. They're making a move around the basement and moving as a team, which is what they need to do yeah, to try I'm and get back in this game. Actually, you know, liking what I'm seeing here. Yeah, like yeah, the, no, it's, it's looking side. pretty good from Reform. So maybe we've got an interesting game on our hands. Maybe we'll see that capture still apply. But Lunny goes down to the railgun. It just seems as if the support wasn't there for Lindez when he needed it. Crispy Beck is going to pick up the kill and Havoc, though. He has support from his teams now. And there comes. They're Coming around from uh, BR base now, XL, and they are going to pick up the kill. Sneaky coming in with a, with a double, and when you've got a player on your team who can do that on his own, then it just really is beneficial for yourselves. And is he actually going to be able to move over to Nest and deal with the player here? Yeah. He doesn't need to. Havoc's grenade's going to come in there as well. Snakey picks up the kill there as well. He's going to be picking up the second. He's got a couple of guys in front of him. Picks up a double, and that's nice work with a pistol. Yeah, that's absolutely lovely work there from Snakey. We jumped on board with him as he picked up the double. Not only did he get the double as well, he uh, actually rushed around to the nest and identified the danger there from Reform. Decided, hey, I, I need to get this guy out of the nest. Havoc took him down with a nade, and Snakey was the man to reset the stronghold. And currently it's 68 to 31, and that lead is only growing time. Yeah, it's looking good for them now. A bit of a shaky start, but you know, coming out of Reformed here, they're looking pretty good. I mean, we've seen a couple of flashy moments from them, and the rotation round to each one of the strongholds has been good when it needs to. The defense coming in there for Godshot up top there, picking up a double kill with the pistol, albeit there were just a couple of cleanups, but good work and good teamwork from both these guys. We're going to switch over to Snakey now, and he's had a really good game, as we did see that fight, that last play coming out of him when he rushed over the nest to try and defend his teammates, and he did a really good job. 
as he died since not 100% sure, but the score is pretty convincing. And if you are an Excel fan, 80 to 31 from him. SMG comes flying out, needs to bail out there. The shot's not quite landed. His teammate are going to be there to clean up things as well. But once again, the control is all dead. And it seems that Reformed are really, really pushing on this basement quite a lot. Uh, it's not necessarily working out for them so much. I mean, at the beginning of the game, they were trying to get Nest down basement at the same time. Probably about, I mean, just the basement doesn't seem to be working for them at this moment in no, time. No, certainly not. I mean, you saw towards the start of the game, they were pushing that basement as a team. And, you know, they were, they were working together, they were getting kills, and they were being very methodical about it. But at the moment, they seem to be running around like Halo's chickens, and XL are just picking off one by one. And I think that's really contributing towards the score at the moment, 91 to 31. And it looks like it's going to be... Uh, pretty easy here for XL to close out the game as long as Reform keep rushing one by one. Yeah, at this moment in time, you know, we've seen Reform have a pretty good start. They were looking all right, but 95 to 31 is the score. That's rising very, very slowly, but it's looking like XL are going to be good for this first map. They've got control where they needed it. They pushed in when they needed it. Here comes the ground and power. Not going to quite land for Colossal. And that's been the story of Reform's game. It's looked all right up until the last moment. XL take map number one. Yeah, reform there on your screens. Disappointing performance from them in game one. They, they uh, kept it close early on, but yep. uh, the experience there out of XL closing out the game was pretty simple for them. I think that's probably what is disappointing for them, is that they did look pretty good at the start, and then it sort of just fell off a little bit for them. But unfortunately for them, they are going to be 1-0 down. But XL looked good. At the beginning, we sort of said, wow, is Reform really going to come in here and ask some questions? They did for around three minutes. Yeah. <laughs> and then XL just turned on the heat and walked away with the map. Uh, you need to uh, put more pressure on XL for more than three minutes, I think. Uh, you <laughs> see Snakey there on the leaderboard with 16 kills. A really great game out of him. I think he led the whole game in kills yeah. in the end. Uh, we, you know, when we were on his point of view, he just looked uh, really comfortable on the map and he, he, his movement was on point as well. So really good stuff there from XL in game one. Yeah, looking very, very strong. And, and you know, we said it as, as these games go on through the day, the seeds get closer and closer and closer. Yeah. The games will inevitably get closer and, and we've seen it there. I mean, the, obviously the disparity between Epsilon and the ground and pound, was, it was huge. Dignitas taking on Potent was huge. A few taking on Hype Gaming was massive. Was, yeah, <laughs> I mean, uh, but then coming into this now, XL look a little bit closer to you. Oh, well, sorry, Reform look a little bit closer yep. to what we're expecting to come out of these top four teams. All, albeit in the end, it was really convincing from XL, but we'll maybe see something from Reform to potentially get something out of this. Yeah, and here's the thing: we're, we're, we're from the outside looking in, so you know we're seeing, we're predicting XL to try and make a statement. But on the inside, maybe they're just thinking, "Hey, come on, let's just get some yeah. practice in. You know, let's get comfortable here in these booths here at Gfinity, and you know, just." Get comfortable in our surroundings and, and just make the most of this experience. Yeah, because I mean, this is a, a lot of these teams. This is the first time they've necessarily been at the G Finney Arena. It's something new for players. Obviously, yeah. a lot of them have, have been to events before. But I mean, it's, it's a whole different ball game when you're inside that booth. Maybe you know, some teams maybe thrive off not being in that sort of um, that, in, that sort of kind environment of the because they, yeah. they like the atmosphere. They like the loud, everything like that. I mean, I used to. I, back in my day when I used to play a different video game. Uh, we, we won't talk about that <laughs> we'll video talk about that There's one. no need. Uh, you know, when you're against each other, you know, there was that hype that you yeah. got. And then some players thrive off that. Hmm. Maybe, you know, going to these booths is different. But, I mean, we heard the Infuse guy, uh, I can't remember who it was. Blackjack. Uh, Blackjack yeah. uh, speaking to Josh after the game then. He, he really liked it. Obviously, you can concentrate a lot more. There's no distractions. And that will play at the players' hands as well. Well, that's the thing. I mean, I, was, I had the opportunity to sit in the booth yesterday and play against Strong Side on Halo 5. And by the way, I took so many maps off him. It's, it's so much, you know, it's just... I wasn't we don't, here, we, but we I, don't really I, need I to talk about it. Lying, you know, I mean, I mean, no, for real. I, I for beat real? Strong Side on Halo 5 with Golden Boy's wife on my team. I know, right? Anyway, I'm proud of you. <laughs> I was sitting in the booth and I was looking up at all the empty seats. I was like, wow, when this arena's full and you're, you're sat playing the game and you, know, you make a big play and you look up and, and you see all the, play, uh, all the people in the stands, it's going to be incredible. So like I said, atmosphere, I think, is definitely going to play a part for XL. Yeah, well, uh, I mean, let's see what they can do as the tournament goes on. I mean, everyone in the prediction has them a solid fourth, which yeah. is the position. Like, yeah, you don't want to be there. You either want to be top three or, or, or death, yeah, <laughs> essentially. Basically. You know, that, that is what everyone's aiming for. Of course, we do have the prize pool. I, I don't want to get it wrong. <laughs> First place is five thousand pounds. Yeah. Second place is three thousand pound, and third place. I'm glad you remembered it because yeah, I yeah. actually yeah, look. But yeah, I mean that's obviously like a good consolation for all these teams. They want to go in there and try and win as much money as possible. But the main thing everyone's aiming for this weekend is those three spots. And here's the thing as well for XL. There's quite a lot of pressure on them because if they don't get fourth, and you know a, a team like Viperio, who are quite close, I think they match okay. up quite well against. Uh, uh, XL do Viperio. If, if you know they do slip up at some point in the bracket, that, that's massive pressure on on their shoulders because yeah. everyone's predicted them as fourth and everyone's got them as, as the fourth place team. Like that's a lock. Like XL fourth place. You do know you that could maybe you know play into some kind of pressure towards XL. Yeah, I mean we'll, we'll talk about maybe those top three teams being broken 
in just a bit, but we are going to have a look at the remaining maps. We are not expecting to see Truth capture the flag, unfortunately. Well, I'm if, a huge fan. But if game one was anything to go by, certainly not. Yeah, I mean, let, let's see what they can do because, I mean, it wasn't for Reformed, it wasn't all bad news. You know, they had those moments where they could potentially do something then, where it was looking good in moments, but it needs to look good all the time. It, it, yeah. needs, it needs to be coordinated every single moment, especially against a team as good as XL. They're going to need to do this on Slayer, on Colosseum, which is going to be the next map. Yeah, especially with all these power weapons. Oh, I mean, yeah. Not only the rocket launcher and the sniper rifle, I mean, we, we drill on about it so much. Power weapon control is so massive in Halo 5. These, these weapons are so dangerous. But you also have the scatter shot down there in bottom middle as well. We saw Dignitas earlier on in the broadcast. Very, very calm and collective and made sure they, oh. they were reining in that scatter shot as well. So so keep an eye on players trying to trying to rein that one in. Big battle going over there. And I think it's actually going to be reformed, getting a hold of the rocket launcher there. And just to have a flick through to try and find out, but I, I'm sure they got a hold of it. And the kills are actually going to come in there for XL straight off the bat. They are 3-1 to the good. But there you go, actually Havoc does have a hold of that rocket launcher. I'm not sure if he got rid of one of the reform guys who did have it, but it was, it was a really nice push from the left-hand side. But they both sent two guys to get a hold of this, and obviously it's such an important weapon to have. Oh yeah, absolutely. Wow. I'm also seeing Snakey uh, with the sniper as well. So as soon as Havoc's all done with his rocket launcher, we'll swap over the Snakey. Uh, as you see there in the kill feed, he will take down Crispy Beck. I'll tell you what, I kind of need to go over the Snakey right now because some of the some of the shots this man has hit in the qualifiers have been absolutely miraculous. You know, what? one of the huge things out of me when I started watching esports, I used to love watching guys uh, like Walshy and his teammates with you know snipers. And let's see what Snakey can do with this because it is the staple of Halo, the sniper. Yeah, it absolutely is. Got shot there, picking up a big double kill there oh. in the kill feed. But ten to three at the moment, reformed, looking outclassed by XL, but it's still early on in this game. Snakey is trying to take some angles. I love the trigger discipline though. He knew he couldn't hit that shot. Decided to, hey, you know, I'll, I'll keep this bullet for another time. That's exactly what he did. It's such an important thing here is, is to be very disciplined because I mean, what, you, you don't have a lot of bullets. Uh, and if you can save them and make sure you're hitting those shots, it's just such a big thing for your team. And he's really holding down the side very, very well in bread face. Is he gonna be able to pick up the snipe? Just aiming around, making sure you move it. But then again, it, it's good to see that the rest of his teammates are protecting the guy yeah. with the sniper. They're there to say, right, okay, you're gonna shot on you, sit back and then we can do the work for you. Yeah, and when I saw analysts talk about power weapon control, it's not only just, you know, getting those power weapens, but it's also a <laughs> snaky there hits a lovely shot. It's also it's making sure the player with the power weapon stays alive. That's exactly what XL did there. L uh, I think it was Snakey who must have screamed to Lunny, hey, I need help, I've got sniper, and there's a guy pushing me. Lunny said, hey bro, don't worry, I got you. It's all good. It's just smart, very, very, it I wouldn't say passive, but oh. good, but it's thinking, they're not a really good snapshot on the Lindes there. Uh, on a killing spree as well, so good work by him, but it, not necessarily passive, but it's, it's very methodical from them. They seem to be moving around, just making those slow movements, the movements they need to, nothing too extreme. As you can see, Snakey going to push around here, and he is just really controlling things. Does miss that shot, hits the second, though. Hat trick for him, and the sniper headshot coming in as well. So really good work from Snakey at the moment, who's making it look very, very easy. And trust me, I've tried to use the sniper rifle. It isn't, as far as as far as he makes it look easy, yeah. it ain't that easy. From my perspective... Speak for yourself, yeah, Chris, okay. okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm amazing. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm trash. That's I, lo <laughs> I love how Snakey is, is so aware of those those rocket corner spawns. Uh, he's constantly checking his own side. Even, even though he is controlling this red base, he knows they can still spawn in the rocket corner, so I'm, I'm liking the awareness here, but uh, 23 to nine in favor of XL, and that score's only growing as Lunny picks up a double kill. Uh, as long as Snakey's got this thing, I actually kind of like this rotation at the moment. He's uh, he's waiting for the new sniper, and he's just got a whole new What's sniper up? to play with, and he'll take down Colossal as well. Make <laughs> oh, that wow. two now for Snakey. Can he make it three? As the player will run around the corner, but oh, don't do it, please. I, I, I would Just try to line it up there. I think I would have <laughs> had to flip this table first. <laughs> Are you that strong? Uh, I could try. <laughs> Maybe, maybe we'll try it later. You and Alex on about being a fighting team together. Maybe well, you can hey, work it together. Listen, but I'm scrappy, you know. This. <laughs> we heard, we heard. I'm over the Snakey <laughs> with this DMR. Let's see what he can do with this yet. And just transitioning and over. He hasn't died in such a long time, man. Yeah. He is really. I'm interested to see the scoreboard at the end of this one. But just really looking. Right, let, let's let's give someone else some camera time. I, I know it's obviously a nice to look on board with Snakey when he's doing this, but. Let's see what else. Is. Let's see if any of these scrappy guys, along with yourself, is, is doing any business with the pistol. Yeah, because we've seen Lunny pick up some kills. Let's see what Lindas can do. Yeah, let's see what Lindas can do. I mean, he's, he's a bit of a scrappy guy like myself. Uh, he's going to try and challenge two of the XL players, though. And, and that's something that XL are so well dr drilled on, like the bait and switch. They know, hey, why would we challenge one guy one by one when we could challenge two people? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, it's such a massive thing. Uh, teamwork, again, is huge in Halo. Let's see what Lindas can do here. Shot's going to go in there. Should it be able to pick up the kill on Havoc just about? He did take a couple of shots, God shot. It's gonna come in there and try and clean him up, but Lindez does manage to get away. Rocket launch is available, and see his teammate is actually gonna go for that. 
He's going to be able to get a hold. Crispy back did pick up the kill on the Lunny. And there you go. You look at the right launcher. It's not out of the question. 20 kills is a large gap, but yeah. it's not completely impossible for them to bring this one back. And it is going to be completely wasted them. I mean, he does get the kill there, but that first one really should be picking up that one. Yeah, I was going to highlight what Colossal needs to do is find Snakey straight away and take him down. That's exactly what he did. If they're going to get back into this game, they need to shut down the power weapon player for Excel. And that was Snakey, and Colossal did so perfectly. But like you said, 20 points, really hard to come back from. But uh, as long as Colossal has these rockets, he is out now. But as long as he has those rockets, he will try and make something happen. But again, just great trades from XL. They're, they're yeah. really well disciplined. You know, they, we seem reformed. I've actually managed to get a hold of the Sniper as well. They have those power weapons, but the, the, the difference has stayed the same. It's been 20 points still. So, you know, XL are doing really well to keep this at where it was. Chris Beck coming up with a good shot on the Havoc there, though. And Stinky's going to fall off the map Come as well. On, so it's a little bit closer. Yeah. One thing I will say, look at the ammo in the, in the Sniper. I think there was around... Uh, 14 bullets when, when Crispy Beck picked this thing up, and I think, Ooh. oh my word, the snapshot cross map there from Crispy Beck. What I was going to say, it's just a testament to how long Snakey stayed alive with the sniper. He was able to get the second cycle of snipers. Uh, it's Crispy Beck at the moment, going on a little bit of a mini tear. They're only down by 19, but uh, XL only need 11 kills to win here, Ton, and it looks like a formality at this point. Pretty yeah, much. it really does. As it went on, we really need that gap to close down for reform, but. If you're an XL fan, it's looking pretty good for you. A couple of kills going to come in for them, and they are going to extend that lead to 21. It is now 41 to 20. Not going to quite happen for Colossal there. Really need to pick up that kill. We do see his teammate on the other side of things. Lindes does pick up the kill of Snake. He has that sniper rifle again, which can only spell trouble. Eight kills away are XL from winning this game. Yeah, those rockets are coming up in three, though. And if you're a reformed fan, you've got to just hope and pray that they can they can make something magical happen. Down, Colossal, yeah. once again, is going to try and take down Snakey. But, uh, oh, Lunny, the man Protection. who picked up the rockets, protected his teammate there. And it's, again, it just comes back to what we were saying. If you have a power weapon, it's not only about you know maintaining the control of that thing, it's about staying alive. You know, It's about keeping your teammates alive while you have that power weapon. Yeah, and uh, if you're protecting your power weapon guy with another power weapon, I mean, yeah. that can only spell danger for the exactly. other team. But four kills away, mate, that two is Godshot and Snakey. Both have a sniper rifle in their hands. This is looking really good for XL. And it's always looked quite comfortable. I mean, a couple of times Reformed have come into the, came into this and sort of said, yeah, you know what, we're, we're maybe not that much of a pushover, but Snakey's going to try and convince that XL are the better team of this matchup. It is what I'm seeing at the moment, though, Tano. I'm seeing Lunny with the rockets, Snakey with the sniper, and Godshot with the sniper as well, as XL close out game number two and win the series. Yeah, very, very well played by them. It looked comfortable all the way through, as you did say. I mean, the first map, we, we sort of said, look, reform. Uh, they're looking all right here. They're looking all right. And XL really just turned it on. Second map, I think, you know, you look at reform, and maybe they were a little bit despondent from from what happened in that first map. They thought themselves, okay, actually, it's looking all right. And then they got crushed. So, I mean, going the second map, that's going to be a, a dent in your confidence. And, you know, XL looked really strong. Snakey, the main guy for that one. If we can just have a look, quick look towards the scoreboard. I and mean, he went 14 and 2 in yeah. the end there. So, I mean, that's just massive. One thing that me and uh, Onset highlighted uh, throughout the qualification campaign is that if Godshot plays well, then Snakey will play well as well. Okay. Um, so, they're kind of the main duo for XL. And, and Havoc and Lunny kind of just work around those two. So, yeah. as long as those two are firing, then they can put up a fight against any any top team. But, but the problem that we've seen throughout the qualification campaign from XL is when they go up against those top teams, they lose, but it's only by small margins. So you think there's potential for them to there's maybe get through that top three, because everyone is really stable. That down is Epsilon, Dignitas, and Fuse yeah. are the top three teams to beat, and the top three teams to probably pick up those spots. Yeah. Do you think there's still potential for XL? To yeah, oh yeah, there's 100% there's potential there, but the problem is they're losing by such small margins and, and they can't quite get it done. That's the problem. They, they never seem to, to, to come through. I mean, every single qualification campaign, I, ha I hate to go on about it, and I know XL are going to hate me for this, but they got to the semifinals every single time, lost 3-0 three zero, three zero, every single time. So do you think it's maybe just that slight edge that those other three teams have over them? Is yeah. it just a slight disparity? I think so, disparity yeah. maybe? I, I just, all the, the top three teams above them just are, are so well drilled and, and they, they just are such tanky slayers. It's hard for XL to keep up with them. Um, and I think teamwork plays a massive factor in that as well. I, th I think if XL are, are going to break into that top three, all four players need to turn up. Well, we'll see what they can do. Actually, we're going to throw it over to the analyst guys to see what they can break down. Snakey, absolute monster in that game, guys. Well, thank you very much there, Tan. Uh, guys, let's take your kind of first impressions on that match. Well, this, I mean, the first game that we saw, uh, it, was, it was a bit of crushing, but there was some resistance shown as well. I mean, they got the win, but I, I saw more resistance in that first game than I have seen in the, in the previous games we've seen today. So, uh, but Excel were going to be happy. I mean, they, they picked up the 2-0. That's, that's what they set out to do, and uh, they did it in pretty good style. Okay, so was that kind of what we expected of Excel in terms of 
we think they're the fourth best team here. Was that a fourth best showing? I think it was a pr pretty convincing. Pretty on, convincing. On, on paper, yes. Um, I guess the the story I kind of get from Excel and what they remind me of is they remind me of the 2007 squad 5K from uh, from North America. That that consists of like Roy Lunchbox, Hokum, and um, their fourth. Why can't I think of it right now? Either way. It's probably because you've just gone back nine years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Well, the whole just point casually. was, if they were that, that clearly established fourth place squad, mm -hmm. the entire year, like, there were a lot of, you know, like my final ball squad, there was Carbon and Straight Rip, and they were all clearly better than 5K, and there were times that they would take games off us or put up fights, but they were clearly better than every other squad out there. And that's why I see from Excel, you know, their, their scores weren't as dominating uh, as, like, someone like, or whomever, but whole point being is they still had such a convincing win. It was never like they might drop this first game. They <laughs> won 131. Yeah. They won 50, and I forgot what they had at the end of that Slayer game. It, it wasn't at any point that they had a chance of losing at all. Okay, well, let's actually jump on board with the player then. It's Havoc. Havoc, congratulations. Um, the first map, around about a 27-point mark, you guys were going level to level, and then after that, you kind of pulled ahead. Changing game plan or settling down? Oh, it's just 100% it's just settling down. Like First series of events is always a bit shaky at the start. It's just getting into the flow of things and then starting to get composed. And that's when we start like getting our, uh, on top of the camos and the uh, power weapons. And then from there, it was just controlling the map and then just push, uh, holding off the pushes. Tell us about that steak dinner on the, uh, on the Slayer. Uh, well, for us, Coliseum is a favorable Slayer map for us. Like We're actually like big fans of that. I think it's one of our better Slayer maps. So we're always confident going into that no matter who it is. So. When we saw it on the thing on the uh, the map pool, we were quite pr like pleased about that. So that's pretty much like business as usual, to be fair. Some people say you got guys have obviously made the semis of every online cup, and some people say that you're going to qualify for the EMEA, EMEA regionals, but you're going to have to do so online. What do you have to say to the cynics? Um, well, the standings speak for themselves. Obviously, like we did flop in the uh, semis pretty much every time, but it was never us doing big mistakes as it was. So if we just like tighten up these small mistakes, we can take any of the top three teams as it is, and that's what we we're planning to do this weekend. All right, well, good to hear. I'm going to fire back to Bracey and the analyst team. Thank you very much. Interesting interview. Um, just by the way, it was Fear Itself was the fourth on that uh, roster. I <laughs> saw that was all the time. All right, first, in my defense, I'm 31 year old years old right now, and I was delayed like 31 hours at the airport, so... You've it's got that, yeah, you can I've use got, that. I've got both those excuses, excuse. age and airport <laughs> excuse. But yes, Fear Itself was the fourth member of 5K, and I'm sure I'll get like 25 tweets throughout the rest of the day saying like, it's Fear, you idiot. And How did you, know, you forget like, Fear? Yeah. <laughs> it will come from him as well. He'll, he'll, get, he'll get on you guys. <laughs> um, one thing to take away from the interview, you seem very humble in the fact that he goes, yeah, everyone's kind of been putting us forth. He went, and we have kind of just failed in every semi. So I think it's kind of cool that you kind of there own up to their failings and accept what they've done so far, but are willing to try and move past that. I think one thing from that interview that it's the business as usual that Havoc said. I think they're used to getting to this stage. They're used to getting through these teams that they should beat, and they do beat them. But business as usual isn't going to be good enough for them at this tournament because, as you said, we've said it a thousand times, that fourth is fourth. I mean, that's the Third loser, fourth loser. Sorry, not third loser. That'd be third. <laughs> but uh, I think they've got. A, I think they know what they've done, and I think they know what they want to achieve. And I think they kind of. I, th I think they're a bit fed up of coming fourth, to be honest with you. And I don't think they like the label, <laughs> so uh, they'll be looking to get rid of it. Okay, let's jump into this map by map. First of all, the rig. Kind of, what did you notice? Well, the rig was uh, for me. It was all about me and Wonderboy have noticed through the cups that there's a duo on this team that's really effective working together, and that's Godshot and Snakey. It seems all the time that Godshot will be starting kills and staying alive, and then Snakey's map movement is so good, he's always in position to pick up those kills. You'll see, in that game, he picked up four or five double kills almost immediately, and neither of the opponents that he was facing were full shields. And that just shows good teamwork to me. It shows that his map movement is, is on point. He's getting himself in great position to finish off kills. And it just seemed from there, they were just picking up the necessary slays they needed to just get control. Okay, um... For me, this is, like I said, we, we've kind of gone through now what I, everyone is expecting. So when we had our first kind of meeting and briefing, top four seeds, oh, they'll get through this first kind of game really, really easily now. Is this where it starts to get a bit more interesting just before, you know, as, we, as we go on? Yeah, definitely. I think we, t we saw from Excel what they can do in that second game, especially when we went on Coliseum. We talked about Snakey sniping. I think he went 14-2 and two in the game, and there was one point where he was alive with the snipe for about two minutes. And I mean, he was hitting headshots, but... One thing that I really enjoyed was, uh, as Harry always as says, he's, he's trigger discipline. 
if he saw a shot that he wasn't confident in hitting, he would reposition himself and then predict where that player would be moving and then hit that shot, giving himself sort of the more percentage shots that we'd hit. So I like how Snake is playing at the moment. I like how Excel are playing, but they've got to do more for me. I still think they've got to do more. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep on their back until they don't finish four. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry about that. but so, Solidly on that second map then, is there anything else you kind of noticed or, or kind of picked up on in the way that they were currently playing? Well, it... I guess it's clear that they're kind of fourth place squad because you do see quite a few errors still at this level. Um, you'll see some teams that should be able to go in and like steamroll that squad. Like you saw them playing Epsilon, you'd see the difference be just a you know five or ten kill difference. But that is all the difference in the world because that one extra death with sniper, that one extra death with rockets, adds up, and those are the the mistakes you can't afford against a team of your equal skill level or someone that's better than you. So whole point is they still need to tune up and. Tighten up those small little mishaps that happen through every single game. Do you think it's kind of just a case of you, they could probably take on these top squads and, and kind of break their, their fourth place duck, but not until they kind of readjust those fundamental mini mistakes they're making? Yeah, they they're definitely have uh, fundamental mistakes on both levels. There's the individual level where they're individually making small mistakes, challenging when they shouldn't, uh, not running to cover and buying more time for a teammate. And then a team level where they aren't as organized. There's certain times where they don't seem to know what their plan is when they have them all spawning on the back of a flag on Alpha Bravo. Or what the plan is when they're on the respawn on Rig Stronghold. They just seem to need those extra few seconds to regroup and decide what they're going to do. And you can't afford any free seconds when you're <laughs> playing against one of those top squads. Yeah, I, I agree. I think. You've, you've hit the nail on the head for Excel. It's it's tightening up their gameplay. It's those little situations in game. It's not shots. I saw amazing no, shots from them. That's the thing. Individually, it's individually the, the shot is fine. That's not the issue. It's the, their decision making at the individual level and their coordination at the team level. Yeah, it's a sort of the micromanagement in game. Sort of the moving around, how to communicate with each other. Little little bits. Dave's nailed it. That's why he's here. I mean, he's, <laughs> <laughs> he's got. Oh, uh, what are you doing? You're doing really well. Just so you know, on set, he thinks you're doing really well. Thank um, thank you. Coming from me to you, <laughs> that, that means something, doesn't it? <laughs> it's his entire career. He's been waiting for that justification. Yeah. <laughs> Um, all right, Worth before we before we move much further, is there anything else you guys can want to bring up with the notes you made or, or, you, or you saw? Uh, I think I think it's just the snaky show. If he keeps going off like that, then if they tighten up, then the, the, uh, top three have got to be worried if they get matched up against them. All right, fair enough. Well, thank you very much for your kind of your contributions and, and how that all went. Coming up next, though, it's going to be I Night versus Riot. This is a game we're all looking forward to. See you after the break. <laughs>